if you want to know how you can make your own arresting system in Roblox Studio, you're going to have to watch this video all the to the end to find out exactly how to make this. Hey guys and welcome back to this brand new tutorial on my YouTube channel and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how you can make your own arresting system in Roblox. And what I mean with that, for example, you know, in Jailbreak, you can arrest criminals if you're a police officer. And then what's, that's just exactly what we're going to be doing. So you can arrest players and send them back to jail and then they can escape again. So that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. If you do like this tutorial, make sure to give it a like if you like it. If you don't like it, please drop a dislike on the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell, uh, become a member. And yeah, that's basically it. What I wanted to, yeah, okay, sure. Anyways, um... Before we start off, make sure to get the model from the link in the description, because the model contains um, every essential item, and you need that. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So yeah, now you got the model, and uh, now we're going to set it up. So we're going to go to Toolbox, and we're going to go to My Models, and then you'll see Arresting System Newbie, and then just click OK. And now you'll have this, but don't worry, I will explain everything in the video. So, how, to, how do you set this up? You're probably wondering. So you will see uh, if you open it, replicated storage, server script service, etc., etc. So if you open replicated storage, you will see a remote event. And just drag it in replicated storage and delete the folder. So server script service, who? Oh, and server script service, and server storage, boom. Delete it. Start your GUI, boom. And delete it. Teams, you will get three teams, so make sure to put them in teams, boom. And then you'll see workspace, and you just put it in workspace, and you delete the rest. And this is how you set this up. It is pretty simple. And uh, now what all we have to do is do the coding part. And I'm going to be doing that just like the previous video. I'm going to do like a little bit, little bit of a time lapse. Because uh, I really think that helps out the channel. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. And now let's start coding with the server script service.
So that was all of the coding for this tutorial and what I'm going to do now is something called a recap. I am going to explain uh, most of the scripts. So as you can see over here what we're doing we are requesting the services uh, in the parentheses or in the uh, speech marks I mean my bad. Then we are making a function, we are checking if you're on the police team, and if you're on the police team, then we are going to give you an, uh, you're, we're going to give you handcuffs, because you can arrest people, because you're a cop. Then we got an arrested value to determine, because uh, for the proximity prompt, which will get enabled if you hold the tool, we just need to do some checks, because if you're arrested, you cannot arrest them again. We are making a proximity prompt, kind of uh, obvious, and over here we are uh, making sure the proximity prompt gets triggered, and if it does, then we are checking if the player who triggered it is on the police team, so if a cop arrested you. Then we are going to send the other person back to jail, so we are going to hide the proximity prompt, so they cannot, uh, so the police officer cannot arrest them again. We are just simply making them not allowed to move, we are making them a prisoner again. We are teleporting them to one of the cells, and that's basically it. Over here we are detecting if a remote event has been fired, or received. And we need a player, an argument, and a value for that. We are checking if there is an ar a player or an argument. If there's an argument, we are checking if it is the same as switch team. And if that is true, then we are checking if there's a value. So basically the team. And if that is true, so if there's a team, then we are setting the team to the team what it is. So prisoner or police. Then we are reloading you. So um, we're loaded, reloading your character so you are back to normal again. Then we are uh, doing a little debounce check. We are checking if you're going from prisoner to criminal. And if that's true, then we are basically just going to make sure um, yeah, the police officers can see a prompt uh, without having to re-enable the tool. We are putting you on the criminal team and we are waiting a little bit. Over here, we are connecting the, all of this code over here to the player. Now for the arresting tool. We are requesting uh, services. If you equip the tool and the people are on the criminal team, uh, then and if they are not arrested yet, you can see their prompt to arrest them. Over here, script the parent dot unequipped. So what that does, if you unequip the tool, then all of the proximity prompts will go away. In the team UI, we are requesting services. We are checking if there's a frame. Over here, if you press prisoner, we are going to fire prisoner so you can become a prisoner. Same as police, we are checking for police, firing police, etc. Over here, uh, if the frame is enabled or disabled, you can, like, you know, click on it. Over here, we are checking hide prompt, so if we are going to hide your prompt, if you are arrested, then your prompt goes away. And if someone goes uh, through the uh, criminal part, you know, so if you are going from prisoner to criminal, then we are checking uh, who, uh, which people are on the police team. We are checking if they're holding the arrest tool, because if you don't hold it, and then you equip it, all of them go uh, on anyways, so it doesn't matter. But we, are, we need to check if it's the arresting tool. So that's what we're exactly doing, and if people are holding the arresting tool, then the prompt for that specific player will be enabled. This is the recap, and explaining what everything does. Now let's go to testing. So as you can see right now, I am in a two-player role. So what I'm going to be doing in this uh, role is I'm going to be testing this out. So one of them is going to be a police officer. And as you can see, I press police and I'm a police. So if I go to prisoner again, as you can see, everything works. So let's do it again. Whoa, boom. Okay. Now we've got the arresting tool. And as you can see, I cannot arrest prisoners because they didn't do anything wrong. So I'm going to stand over here and I'm going to let the player. I'm, this player is going to be a, uh, this player is going to be a criminal. So I'm going to do this. As you can see, now they're a criminal. So now I'm. I'm going to hold my handcuffs over here, and I'm going to run towards them. And as you can see, the prompt appears, player 2, arrest. So I'm going to do it right now, and hold E. Boom, they are a prisoner, I can't move, and they are getting teleported back. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to stand over here with my tool to see if that also works. So this person is going to become a criminal right now, 3, 2, 1, boom. And as you can see, we can arrest them immediately. So nope, you're going back, and boom, as you can see, they are now back. So what happens if this person becomes a police officer? As you can see, they also got an arresting tool. And as you can see, I cannot arrest the other because, yes. Yeah, so now let's be become a prisoner. And as you can see, now we are back to normal. So if you did, in fact, enjoy this tutorial, make sure to give it a like if you like it. If you don't like it, please give a dislike on the video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on the notification bell. Please support me if you want to. And all I can say is that my name is Dewey, and I say peace out.